It is a whole new era at the University of St. Joseph in West Hartford. Legendary UConn coach and Hall of Fame coach Jim Calhoun is now the new head men's basketball coach. And Rona Free is the relatively new president of the university. We thank you so much for being with us here today, both of you. And another big news, of course, your team would not be possible if they hadn't decided to allow men to matriculate. We don't use the term co-ed anymore, do we? Well, we are uh, we're open to all. <laughs> <laughs> and Coach, first of all, what, what was the lure to come back to the game? That you well, I simply put, you know, I did ESPN, was helping with UConn and talking to kids, et cetera, but I had an itch, and I didn't know what it was. So I'd go to games and come away not angry and not happy, and that's not good. So I wanted to have more personal involvement. I miss the kids. I mean, when it's all said and done, I wanted to be in the gym with the players. I wanted to hopefully be making a difference in some young guys' lives, which I had done for 45 years at that time, and I missed it. And uh, my accountant said it's a bad move. Uh, <laughs> being a good Catholic, I understand all that. Uh, but more importantly, you know, being with kids and getting up in the morning and, and worrying about things is great. Much better than not having anything to worry about. This is also an opportunity to put a small school on the map, because now everyone's heard of USJ. Yeah, I, I, because I, of you. Well, I appreciate that, but I think they heard it. If they, there wasn't a lot there, they couldn't hear about it. And I very mean that. When I talked to Rona the first time, I really became impressed by the things they did, the, the system of mercy and the mercy values and kind of what we could do there in a very special circumstance. You know, years ago, Northeastern was Division Two. We took it to one. UConn was the bottom of the Big East, and we did pretty good. My point being is that I thought we had an opportunity to not only help the basketball program, but more importantly, help the university, which had so many good things to offer. And when I talked to Rona, she talked about Notre Dame. I said, she gets it because she understands what an athletic program can be the face, never of the program, but the front porch in the university can take care of itself because we had a lot to offer. Tell us about the hiring of Coach Calhoun, how that came to be, and what you said to him and what you thought in the back of your brain as to what this could do for the college. Well, we had an idea that when we decided to become coeducational, we had to do something so that people would know that. Um, so we talked about how we could make a splash. And we realized that basketball being so popular in Connecticut, it would be one way that we could try to make that splash, get the visibility. Um, and so we were just very fortunate that uh, Coach was, was interested in returning to the court and to coaching at the time. But it was really the fact, yeah, the, there would be a lot of visibility from that. But also, he represents uh, the commitment to the community, uh, all that he does for coaches for cancer, the values that he projects. Those are things that are important at St. Joe's. And so it was, it was a good match. He's an outstanding coach uh, and doesn't just bring visibility, but he, he brings that really good coaching as well. So How has he impacted admissions? Well, uh, so last year our <laughs> applications went up 27%. Uh, this year they're up 22%. We have more applications from women as well as applications from men, and that was really important to us. Um, we looked at what happened at other uh, institutions that became coeducational, and they all shared that experience that uh, when you become coeducational, you get more applications from women, and that's come about. You have. Uh taught so many people. In fact, I work as an assistant coach with my, on my son's team with Rick Bush, who Great. of course played for you. Exactly. You, you, you've impacted so many lives over the years. Did some of these players come back to you and just say, thank you for what you've done and look where you put me? Right. Friday night, uh, Rico, I got a call from a young guy named Kimball Walker. Coach, yeah. I'm a starter in the All-Star game. I got goosebumps. Thank him. He didn't have to thank me, trust me. But I think in my life, when I lost my dad and had to kind of make do and had to go home, work for two years and leave college, people helped me. And I always wanted to be in the position to reach out to kids in an important time in their lives to hopefully make some form of difference. And if I can do that, I've passed it on. And that's all I want to do in my life. And I found out, as I said before, when I wasn't coaching, I missed the opportunity to go one-on-one, -on -one, not just about your jump shot, but about your life. This is also easier for your life, too. You don't have to be traveling all across the country as much. Yeah, but I don't make it easy on <laughs> myself. <laughs> I'm a hard driver, and I have high expectations of what I should do to help others. But, but easier in travel years but never emotionally easy because these are my kids. I tell them all the time, the only team I'm coaching, not a national championship, not a team down here or there, you. And this is important to all of us. If you're gonna do something every day, why not do the best you can, can do it? And that's what I strive to do every single day with these kids. How long do you expect this to last? Oh, 10, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> my wife just fainted in Hilton Head, by the way, I want you to know. <laughs> 10 to 15 years, are you ready for that? I'm not sure about that, it's one day at a time because the days are very good. Do you miss UConn at all? Sure. I mean, I'll always be part of UConn. I love UConn. It was a place to allow me as a coach to, 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 to meet incredible people, to have 
Susan Herbs and all the great people I had associated with, I was very fortunate. But I love St. Joe's. St. Joe's is kind of a special place. And you know, I went to a small, I sat on a big school, went to a small school. The intimacy of what we have, the values that people have on campus is pretty special. When I tell a kid to come to St. Joe's and recruit them, they're coming to, I think, a very special place. I don't know if legally you can comment on it, but I need to ask any advice for how to settle the Kevin Ollie case. I don't. And uh, the only thing I care is that Jim Calhoun, Kevin Ollie, whoever it may be, they're not important. What's important is UConn, to make sure that nothing does any way possible disdain the reputation and all the great things that have been built at UConn over the past 35 years. Do you ever think we'll see a St. Joseph UConn game? Um, it would be nice. Could that be arranged? Um, I think we could try. Uh, as long as we don't get too good. <laughs> but Danny's going to do just fine. UConn's going to be great. You know, as I said, I love UConn, always will. You know, as you look at the transformation of the university, because it does feel like a different place, what's the energy like on campus now because of basketball and having Coach Calhoun? Well, games, um, we have packed stands. Most games are now sellouts. We have people from the community coming onto campus who never would have come before. Uh, we have classes from high schools that come. Um, and that's really a part of what we wanted is to make everybody see that uh, we have outstanding educational programs and a really enlivened campus. We're going to put the schedule on our website. A couple games left in the season. Games. Got to check it out. Rona Free, Jim Calhoun. Thank you so much for being on the program today.